Hi, I am Becca Stendhal, Program Director at MSEF, um, and this is a short video about the alignment with the uh, Science and Engineering Fair and tech schools. Um, and so I invited uh, Maria Benes with us from Assabet Valley Technical High School um, and the programs that she does um, at Assabet. Um, so I'm excited to share this information and hopefully encourage more participation um, from technical schools across Massachusetts. So Maria. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll start off with a picture of some, some couple of my great students here. So this is um, clearly before the pandemic because they are in person and they're in, in an auditorium. Um, but these are two of my students that were went on to from our Assabet Science Fair to onto Regional Science Fair, and then from there went on to the State Science Fair. So these are great examples of all that you can do with Science Fair projects. We at Assabet are, are pretty passionate in the biotechnology program uh, about Science Fair and participating. And we have participated every year that there has been a, a biotechnology program. I've been with the program, this is my sixth year at Assabet in biotechnology. Uh, the program has been around 11 years and I participated in science fair a lot longer than that too. So I was a judge when I worked at UMass, when I worked at industry before I was a teacher at a vocational school. And I enjoyed the process very much there as well. And I saw uh, how rewarding it was for the kids and frankly, how rewarding it was for the adults as well. So what I'd like to do today is just sort of talk about the special niche that I think vocational schools have with the science fair process because we have some advantages uh, I think maybe not necessarily over other schools, but some special things about vocational schools that can really add to the process of science fair and uh, lend to a really special experience for our kids in our shop. So I will be speaking from the perspective of a technical teacher uh, as a shop teacher. And so why in the biotech shop, we find this to be such an important experience to put the kids through. And I should just clarify, these are our sophomore, junior, and senior students participate in science fair from the very beginning of the year where we start planning and picking a topic. And it continues right until our Assabet science fair where they have a completed project and they do a presentation with those trifolds that you saw on the other slide. From that, from that point, our students will, some of them will continue on to our regional fair in, uh, in Massachusetts. So for us, we're in region two, we go to WPI for our regional fair. And luckily some of our students just about every single year have gone on to MIT for the state fair as well. So why we feel like this is a, a really important project to participate in considering how long it takes, and it does take uh, a lot of planning and bandwidth on the part of the teachers as well is because there's so many rewards for the students that come that come with this. So certainly in biotechnology, we're, we're not the only shop where scientific inquiry and scientific experience would be a benefit for the students, but having them plan their own project and the organizational skills that go along with that allow them to experience the scientific process in a totally different way than a canned lab, which is you know, something that we do all the time. We do labs and we do lab experience, experiments with them, but when they are planning their own experiment and from the picking of the topic to actually having to gather the materials, think about the hazards, uh, and then conduct the experiment, it really is quite a different experience for them. Our students also do write a research paper, junior and senior year, they produce a research paper that goes along with their, their project. So there's a lot of science, for us scientific writing is a super important skill and also research and being able to use databases. Even if they don't continue on in science or in biotechnology, being able to do your own research, use databases that are out there and certainly writing and presentation skills, these are really great skills for our students to have and certainly competencies that we'd want them to graduate our programs with. Uh, as you might expect, you might expect a lot of our students, not just you know the younger ones, but even older ones, it's very difficult for them to present. I think presentation skills uh, in the classes that I've seen, academic classes, I've seen fewer and fewer opportunities where students are asked to present their work uh, in a way that to an audience. And so they might be nervous and certainly most people don't love public speaking, but again, as a skill that we'd love our students to have when they graduate, being able to communicate their own thoughts and, and work in a way that's really relevant to their audience is something that is super important and going to be valuable to them no matter, no matter what employment that they find afterwards. 
Um, and we have few opportunities to really allow our students to choose their own topic, to really get into something that interests them more than anything else. And so for our students, this could be even forensics, something that we touch on in biotechnology, but isn't, uh, it isn't a huge curriculum that we have. But if they really, they're listening to true crime podcasts and they love forensics, they could choose a science fair topic that is about forensics. And it allows them to take a deep dive into that, do their own research. And we have a, a, quite a few success stories of students who from their science fair topic that they have chosen that was a personal topic have gone on to something in their later education, whether it's their um, going on to a two year or four year college in that area, whether it was the using computers and, and science together like bioinformatics or computational biology, or we have had students with forensics or even animal science. So all of those things started with the little germ of a science fair project, which is really cool. Certainly it doesn't matter what shop you're in, but the ability to problem solve and critically think couldn't be more important. And their science fair, you're using that at every step along the way. So there's just, just a win-win for all these experiences um, for both problem solving and critical thinking. And then there are students who are super motivated by the chance to get an award. You know, this is an opportunity for them to possibly um, get an award, get a scholarship at their regional, at the regional fair. They could get a, even a, a award at our own Assabet Fair, the one we have just at school. And for most students being able to have something to put on their resume when they are a sophomore or a junior, that is really important to them. They love seeing this on their resume that they did their own research and it gives them something to talk about when they go into their very first interviews or interviewing for internships during the summer and things like that. And so they have something to talk about, makes it a little less daunting when you say, well, I've got this really cool project that I did and I know I can talk about that because I'm the expert in it. So all great reasons to do this. And you know, some of, some of those are specific to vocational schools and some are just me just saying how much I think science fair is a great thing for students to be involved in. Well, and I like too that there's there's pieces to this that are, you know, it's applicable to all students, but there's also niches. So there are students who might be really driven to improve their communication skills. And then there are, as you said, there's students who are driven by the scholarships and awards and resume. And there's some who are driven because they want to focus on a topic. And so while there's sort of this mesh between all these ideas, there's also things that can appeal to individual students as well. So it's great. Definitely, definitely. I think one of the challenge of being a shop teacher is that we, we are with the students for a long time. We're with the students from the moment they get to school on a Monday till the end of the day on Friday. So a whole week. And we're with them for four years, freshman year, I mean, ideally freshman year to, to senior year. So we have these opportunities to really, you know, hit them with things that they care about and really find out what motivates them not just a type of lesson or a type of worksheet that they prefer over something else, but really what is interesting to them, what's going to motivate them. And there are so many aspects of science fair that can fulfill that for yeah. different kids in different ways. Yeah. Okay. So I just have this really kind of just an overview of the biotech program. And this is just because not every vocational school does have a biotech program. We are actually in the manufacturing engineering cluster. Um, we are, sometimes they think of us more like health tech, but we are in, in manufacturing. So kind of more like advanced manufacturing. And we are training our students in biotech to be prepared for either further education or employment in some sort of biotech or lab science as we would call it. So that could be in biopharmaceuticals. It could be in research. We've had students go into laboratory animal care care and environmental science as well. Um, and even like I said, forensic science. So here in Massachusetts, there are, you, you can't drive down 495 without seeing at least four or five biotech companies and they need empl uh, employment all along the pipeline there. So from people washing the glassware all the way up to people doing the research. And so our students are, uh, quite a lot of them do go on to get further education, whether it's associates or a bachelor's degree, but not all of them. And it definitely is a misconception that you need that to go and go into work into bio, uh, biotechnology. You could actually graduate from high school and go into biotech. And for a lot of our students at the end of the year, uh, they will start working in biotech. We have a lot of good connections because in Massachusetts, we have so much biotech mm -hmm. um, where maybe they start working and start going to school and kind of refine what they want to do as they're going to school. And then the perk is that a lot of these companies will actually help to pay for some of their college courses too, which is great. So, um, so yeah, that's just a little overview of our program. Great. 
So our timeline, we do start pretty early, not so much with the actual experiment part, but even in September and October, we're trying to have kids think about what would they want to do? It's a long-term project. So we really don't want them to take lightly. What are they gonna do for this project? And there's gonna be a research paper associated with it too. So we probably spend a couple of weeks on just choosing a topic. And some of the ways that we do that are looking at some of the things that they are interested in, just from their social media feeds. We look at uh, periodicals. We have like Scientific American, Science News. Um, we will we'll go online and kind of look at different websites that talk about science, different science articles and new discoveries and see what strikes their fancy and see what they think is interesting. Some students come in and they know what they want to do. And other students, they really are just kind of going through and saying, well, I think that's kind of, you know, antibiotics. You know, I was just on an antibiotic and you know what, I had to take it for 10 days and that was kind of a pain. So maybe antibiotic resistance might be interesting. That's something I haven't really thought about. And so it can come really organically or it can be something that the student had come, came into our shop knowing, oh, I wanna take this opportunity to, you know, to, to look at maybe something about pharmaceuticals or something about chemistry. So during the weeks of say October, November, we, they will start conducting their research on paper. This is where I have them say, okay, now we're gonna learn how to use databases and we're gonna try and find some articles, um, not Wikipedia. Although I say, you know, if you're, you don't know anything about computational biology, sure, look it up on Wikipedia, see what it is, and then go to the bottom, look at their references. And so we talk about the different types of references. It's a great opportunity for them to understand why peer review journals are so important. And you know, for sophomores and juniors, peer review journals are kind of the high end of what they might have one or two of those, and maybe a, more from sort of the Scientific American, a little more periodical based, but choosing the periodical carefully. And so that's that time in October and November. And that's kind of where I am right now is looking at different articles with students and them saying, is this good or is this bad? Is this a good one or is this a bad one? We say, oh, let's look at it. Let's look at the date. Let's look at who's the author. Let's, you know, it's a wonderful way to have them start to evaluate where they're getting their science information, which is really something that I, I think could be applicable to just about anyone, right? You know, where's this coming from? How do I know where to believe it? You know, uh, <laughs> So then we start getting into, okay, so what are we going to, let's plan our experiment. How does this translate into experiment? And this is a great discussion about having, what's your hypothesis and the difference between a researchable question and a hypothesis. And they start to fill out the forms. And this is great. The forms on the MSEF site are wonderful for helping students to crystallize their thoughts about their topic and their researchable question into actions and say, okay, well, what is my plan? Because to be able to, to register for a project, you have to put in your plan, exactly what you're gonna do. And someone is gonna look at it, someone besides, besides me, someone who's gonna tell you, is it safe? What, do, what else do you need to do? What other information do you have to have? So as they are filling out this paperwork, there is, this is a great way for them to start to plan, well, what, you know, what are the things I am going to need? Am I going to have to go to Home Depot or if I'm going to have to have Ms. B order me some planaria from Carolina Biological Supply? You know, where's, where am I going to get this stuff? And how do I work with it carefully? And is it, you know, what are some precautions that I'm going to have to, to take? It's a great time to look at timelines too, because for students who want to maybe grow miniature African violets, um, it may not be enough time between now and January or February to actually complete that process. So all of the aspects of sort of project management, our students are now taking on in this. And those are great soft skills as well. For vocational teachers, these are all things that fall into our curriculum under our strands four, five, and six. And so we have our, our strand two frameworks, which is the biotech stuff, but all of these soft skills, being able to plan, being able to reach out to, to whoever you need to reach out to. Maybe they need to email a, you know, a mason because they're gonna be looking at bricks and, how, and they wanna get some bricks from old buildings. How do you write that email? Those are things that fall into our strands that we have to cover anyway, but this is a great way to kind of put it under a project. So December and January and my shop are very busy. And so at this point, we've sort of stopped our regular labs 
And now everybody's working on different projects and it can be a little chaotic, but it's, it's very exciting as well. You've got as many kids in your shop who are working on what different things. And so you could be working on with diff 15 different topics. This is a great time where if you have people in your school, whether it's paraprofessionals or other shop teachers that are sort of interested in what you're doing, if they want to pop down and maybe help and answer some questions, this is the time I say, oh gosh, I'd love to have, just to kind of come and look at this engineering project. I'll ask my advanced manufacturing folks or my drafting folks, like I've been a student, this isn't my expertise, but you know, they're, their research methods are good, but in terms of their materials they're using, I haven't worked with ferrofluids or something like that before. We, we do hold a science fair in February. So we have that at ASABAT and that's something that we could do a whole nother talk on how to hold your own science fair. Um, and I know that MSA could have some research, has some uh, references and resources on it too, but we invite our industry partners. So certainly our, our PAC members uh, are, co-op people who are hosting co-op for our students and then other industry folks that we know come to the school they serve as judges because at this point me and my co-teacher not going to make the best judge we use the same scoring sheet exactly from the massachusetts site so we use exactly the same score that way students are prepared at every step along the way for the same type of scoring and they know what they're going to be scored on and the at the fair they have their trifold boards and whatever other presentation materials, sometimes they have little videos they've made um, or different items that they use during their process. And the, the fair in February is where we pick the top 12 scoring, uh, and sometimes it's not 12, but the top scoring uh, projects that will go on to regional fair from there. And um, so that's, and that's sort of the remainder of our, our timeline is that our qualified projects will come to WPI because that's a school day. I usually take them, it's kind of a long day. We, we at vocational schools, we sort of have our own little small buses that we use to bring kids to different project sites. And so I'll drive them there in the morning. They come home late at night. The student stay fair at MIT, it kind of depends. Some I have gone and then there have been other times when the students just had to go by themselves because I we couldn't get a sub for the day or things like that. But usually the parents will go there. So it almost is the entire school year. If you think it goes from September all the way till to May, our students do have opportunities to keep working on their projects. If they go on to regional or state fair, we'll allow them to do another round of testing and incorporate that into their, their board. And so uh, for them, it doesn't, it really doesn't end until almost the school year is over. It's great. Yeah, and I, uh, a couple of points too. One thing with the paperwork is there was a change this year that as long as students aren't doing um, projects that involve any of the restricted materials, so different chemicals, tools, humans, those sorts of things, mm -hmm. they don't need pre-approval at the regional level. Um, but I imagine most of your students are using those restricted materials. So <laughs> that paperwork will still be necessary yeah. for the, for the pre-approval. Um, and then in terms of if there are schools that aren't ready or, or aren't able to do that school level science fair or district fair, um, but I love your idea of doing the training, mm -hmm. um, they can choose or there can be some other system that's used for how many projects or which projects go to the regional fair. Mm -hmm. So this, the, the school or district fair is not required, um, but it is a great way when you have all these projects. So. It is, and it's it's something we're able to do because we have so many students yep. in our in our shop. We have invited. This is one thing about I think being at a vocational school is that it we invite our other shops every year, and we have had participation from other shops. So we've had advanced manufacturing come in and have some projects. We've had our computer programming come in and have some projects. Those are two shops that seem to be pretty interested. But there's nothing saying that a student from Cosmo who might be looking at different hair dye. And so, you know, looking at like natural hair dye or hair dye that damages your hair less, that is a great science project. I've had students create nail polish, different types of nail polish that change color depending on your blood oxygen. Um, and that is a great science project. Yeah. So we are actively trying to pull more, more and more shops in. So yeah. because of that, we're able to have the, the fair. We also would love to have another school join us. So if you are, watching this and you are a vocational school and you would like to maybe not hold your own fair but you want to participate and you're within somewhere around Assabet, you know reach out to me because i think it would be great to have schools participating together too great 
Um, the cosmetology thing, before I forget, um, if there is not already a connection, um, the, the organization Beyond Benign, which is based in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, they do green chemistry. They have a whole um, area where they do biomimicry and cosmetics. So folks- Fantastic. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm going to go, I got to break that down after this because that's, yep. that's a whole, whole area that I have students, again, students that come yep. in knowing that that's one of the, what they yeah. want to do. Yeah, it's amazing so, stuff. So we have, this is, a, this is a, a fantastic slide because it talks about the different types of projects that are available to students because as students are coming in freshman year, I go, oh yeah, a science, we have to do a science project if we pick this up. Does that mean I'm going to have to like grow plants and let them listen to like rock music or classical music? Like what? And they say, no, 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 no. Like that, <laughs> it's, it's not just that. And, uh, and please don't do that as an experiment anyway. But, um, but th there's, there are many, Many different types of experiments. If you want to build something, you want to identify a problem that exists and make something better, maybe improve a process, improve a machine, or improve um, something that exists, you could do an engineering project. And there's a whole way that you can do those kind of projects. Experimental projects, sure, definitely. In biotech, that would be quite a lot of mine are Science, what would be science projects or experimental project, but I have had students explore math projects well. And again, this is where it doesn't have to be a biotech student. You could have a student in drafting or advanced manufacturing or in any shop really, and want to investigate a theorem because they happen to love math, especially if you have students on the math team, this is a great way to get them engaged and keep them motivated. Yeah. Computer science is an area where I just would, I would love to have more students involved and have computer projects. And so it can be, it's something like you're developing an app, um, which can be difficult and, you know, but maybe really interesting and challenging to a kid, certainly something that is, could be really relevant to them, or it could be just improving a process in computer science. So it doesn't necessarily have to be very difficult or complicated, and you don't have to be an expert in computer programming. You just sort of identify that there is a problem, and I think there's a way, you know, to streamline this or make this better, and that would be a computer science project too. What you can see though is that no matter what you pick, so you've got the, all of these range of what you could choose from, you do follow very similar steps. So I think as a teacher, that makes me feel better to say, even if I've got a kid who's definitely, math theorems would fall outside of my expertise to say the least, <laughs> but the process, the process isn't all that different in, ter in terms of the steps that you're gonna take with that student too. So by you know, identifying the problem, gathering background information, and then planning and exploring it. And then certainly the presentation at the end. So I think that this is um, a way to show there's a lot that you can do. And then for teachers to say, but don't worry, you kind of got to follow the same, you know, pretty much the same steps as you go along. Yep. And there's more information on this document and examples of what this all looks like. Um, if you go to the SciFair.com website, there's a, a link to access what we call the Science Fair Ready Framework. And this, all this information is in there and you can reach out with any questions. Along with other really great resources in there too. Um, so most of mine do fall into science projects and we have a lot of students working uh, with little organisms, little invertebrates. So that's something where if you want to, you know, say test energy drinks, you know, does green tea affect um, if I drink green tea, is that going to affect me more than say drinking a monster, right? Um, well, we can't really test it on humans, which is good, but we have little creatures called Planaria and Daphne and Magna. We can talk about animal models and the use of animal models. And then we also talk about, there's a little bit of math, diluting them down to the size of the, those tiny little organisms and maybe putting them through a maze or seeing how long it takes for them to do an activity. And so those would be great science projects, very testable, and also a way to introduce kids to animal models and how they're used in science and how relevant they are. And it's is a really great tip. You can get fruit flies that don't fly. So their wings are not large enough for them to actually fly. They're a lot easier to manage in the classroom and in a shop than the fruit flies that will, they're, they're going to fly over the can say, oh, they all woke up and they flew away. So, <laughs> so um, those steps, we're probably all familiar with this, with the science projects. Those would be the majority of my, my projects and probably likely in biotech but I do get quite a few engineering projects too. And a lot of the students that have come from other shops to participate in our science fair are really interested in engineering projects. And so 
just a little bit about the engineering design process here. This is another way for to get kids interested. They see something they want to improve. I think assistive devices are a great opportunity here. Um, and you know, for kids that are in advanced manufacturing, this is something where you know making different products for people who are maybe having difficult mobility. I've had students make different utensils. Um, so it, it, you know, for someone who maybe is having trouble eating or people with tremors, and it doesn't have to be super complicated, but you're seeing and identifying a problem and then you're making it better. You're making a prototype and then making improvements and testing it. And there you go. That's a great project. Yep, definitely. So this is when I start to explain what our science fair project is going to look like. Um, this is one of the things that I use to summarize what my students are, are going to do. And so for my, for my school, for the biotech program, we have three big deliverables at the end of it. And one is the science fair lab notebook. And so this builds on our idea of lab notebooks, which we do use for our own labs. They have a separate lab notebook for their science fair. And this is something that would be required at science fair. So you're not only are you filling those requirements, but this is a really great reinforcement of at least in science and engineering, things that you'd be doing anyway. Uh, we talk about, we do updates weekly on that. So I'm looking at their science fair lab notebook each week to, are we keeping moving? Because um, unfortunately, one of the things that can happen is that we can kind of forget it, but if we don't keep, keep doing updates and keep checking it, that can sometimes get forget until the end. We do a research paper. Uh, I don't, it's not a requirement at science fair to have a research paper. We do it as a way to make sure that you are doing the research on your topic before you jump in. So you want to have a really good understanding of what you're getting into. And this is our way to have, make sure that students have done their sort of diligence and really understanding their topic is to have this organized into a research paper. From sophomores to juniors to, to seniors, I have different different constraints on what they have to give. So the sophomores have a little bit of a shorter paper, um, but they do include, we have the results and we have conclusion. And so all of this then can help to populate that trifold presentation, the science fair poster. Um, and last year we had presentations, so we had PowerPoint presentations, but they did still include all of these elements. So we had an introduction methodology, um, that had pictures. So one of the things I said is take pictures of yourself working, take pictures of your setup. You know, if you're going to be presenting it, pictures look fantastic. And then what are our results? So again, this is one of the great things about science fair is that you're getting kids to, um, rather than just generating data for them to, you know, make graphs with and understand visual communication of results, they are generating their own data and then having to decide how does this work better? Is this a pie chart? Is there a bar chart? What are those error bars? Why do they, why are they above and below? And getting into all of those great issues, this is a way for them to do it, but really be interested in the topic and not just me saying, you know, types of candy or, you know, heights of males versus females or something that's where it's just data. This has relevance to it and it's important to them. It's great. And, and there's yeah. so many, um, I think the science communication piece is so important and, and being able to approach it from different directions. The research paper has to be formatted differently or it's a different audience, you're conveying different information differently. Um, one thing I have heard from students is, is that, why did I have to do a research paper? That seems so yeah. unnecessary. But I think there are also other opportunities. Like there are um, journals like the Journal of Emerging Investigators that mm -hmm. they wanna publish student work. There's other ways that they, students can think about the the way their project can reach out and impact beyond the science fair when you take that research paper and what, how else can they share their work in that way? So I think there's so much potential there. It is, you know, and it is tough. I think it's tough to, you know, as, as someone, and I did spend quite a few years as a medical and technical writer as I, when I was working in industry, it's tough to write. It is, you know, it's yeah. not necessarily a fun activity, yeah. but it is a really good one. And it's one that once you, kind of like public speaking, you go, I know it's going to be unpleasant, but once I get over the hump and my, I don't have a blank page in front of me, I know it's going it, to, there's going to be worth it. There's going to yep. be, a, there's going to be a payoff at the end. And so even if it's just helping kids get over that hump of, I know it's uncomfortable, but I'm going to keep going because I know it's worth it. 
Yep. That I think is a great thing to give students to say, you know, you could do it, you know, and then, and then as a teacher saying, what do you mean you can't do whatever it is later in the year, you just wrote a 15 page yeah. <laughs> paper for me yeah. and you cited it and you had a bibliography and you had, you had figures that were labeled with captions. So it is kind of a good thing to kind of hang over their head later when they say, oh, I can't, I just can't do it. You go, yeah, you can, you did. Yeah. Cause you wrote, a, you know, a nearly professional looking paper. And that's a really fun thing. Yeah, excellent. So this last slide, I'm going to kind of take really kind of keep a lot of what I've said can really apply to almost any student. Um, although I am speaking from the, the vocational standpoint, this is really benefits and challenges that are specific to the environment of a vocational school. And so when we've talked a lot about the, the general benefits and why we would do this, but sometimes one of the benefits, and it can also be a challenge because you might think that's a typo. I have weekly schedule on both a benefit and a challenge <laughs> is that I know for my students in my school, I see them, I see them one week, then they go to academics and I don't see them for a, a whole week Then I see them a week. So sometimes that's a benefit. They're working so hard, but before then they, they start to get burned out, then they go away for a week. And when they come back, they have this renewed sense of like, oh yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready now to do this. And they're kind of ready to attack it again. And that could be a really a, a great benefit too. It can be a challenge. And I will say one of the biggest challenges is that um, when you're working with organisms, having that week off, we have to, we have to really get, we have, have had contracts with our kids saying, you've got to come in and check on your fruit flies. And even though my co-teacher and I, we do a lot of taking care of fruit flies and planaria, we have little ant farms and all these things during this year, it is good for the students to be able to take ownership and at least come back and check on them and make sure everything um, is okay. And they don't need to be fed. And sometimes you need to collect data for 10 days in a row. And that can be really challenging in a school environment. So not just a vocational environment, but what happens over the weekends. Yep. And it's really being creative. It's all the things you do as a teacher anyway. So we've had students take home planaria. I've had students take home Venus flytrap plants because they had to collect data every day. Um, and then I've had times where we just, we figure out data collection, maybe it's every three days. So it, it can skip a weekend depending on what the project is. So we, I think in shops, we love projects. We love big projects for the kids. This is a great carrot for kids who maybe finish all their work early in a week and go, what else, what else, what else, what else do you have for me? This is great. This can be as big as you need it to be. This can, you know, these for those kids that want to take on that extra or go that extra mile or have that time because they finish their regular work. This is great. Give them a robust project, add more challenges to their project and let them attack it. And I think in the shop environment in particular, having a project oriented activity works very, very well. Yeah. We also have the advantage of having other shops. So, I mean, as biotech, if I need somebody to design some sort of scaffolding uh, for a project, Carpentry is three doors down. I've needed PVC plumbing for to house um, house flies, which I don't recommend keeping house flies for a project. <laughs> it was really gross, but we needed like PVC plumbing to be able to feed them. And plumbing is right down the street, right down the street from us, right over there. So having these other shops and the expertise of the shop teachers is something that you're not going to get at other schools. And that's why I think Vogue schools are really well seated to start, you know, once we get into the science fair at the regions, like we can really have some opportunities here that other schools just don't have because we have so many different shops at our disposal. We in biotech don't have skills plus. So a lot of the school is involved in skills plus and biotech is so new that we don't have a, we don't have a challenge or a competition but we have science fair. And I know like for computer programming, they have skills plus, they also have hackathon, but it gives your kids who are motivated by a, by a challenge or they're competitive. This really does give them something to sink their teeth into where we, because we don't have skills plus, that's something there. it's, you know, we can participate in other ways, but this is something where they can participate. They really can let loose with their competitive spirit here. I mentioned before, this takes care of so many of the soft skills and the, um, the frameworks that are in our strands four, five, and six. And again, for vocational schools, 
you know, even if you have, like, we are very lucky, this is the first year we have a, um, a career focused writing teacher. So she's doing a lot of that curriculum, whereas it was, it was on the shop teachers before, but we are, we, we want to reinforce that in shop. So resume building, writing emails, making cold calls, all of these things are really important skills for the kids to have, knowing what employability is, knowing understanding why it's important to, to have all these skills. Um, we want to reinforce them in shop and this project does so many of those. We also like the other shop teachers who are usually happy to help. I know in biotech, our PAC members, they love it. And so they'll email us and they'll say, what did you have any questions? What do you, is there any materials you need? What do you need for, for science fair? And I know that and other shops that have really robust PAC, uh, PAC committees, that could be a really big help too. So the challenges, so that's all the, the good stuff. The challenges and the ways we get around the challenges, the weekly schedule, as I mentioned before, it can also be a challenge. And I kind of mentioned how we, we kind of creatively every year have to figure out how we're gonna get around that with every project being different. Um, the other thing is that, as you know, as a teacher, not all kids are motivated by an independent project. And this is a challenging project. And so for those students, they may need a little more of your guidance. And it may be that research methods don't don't come as naturally to them. And so that will require a little more on the teacher's part. We have strategies for those students because I every year I do have one or two students who go, I have no idea what to do. There's nothing I want to do. I don't want to do any project. There's nothing that interests me. <laughs> and he's like, oh gosh, okay. So some of our strategies for those students are we we will actually start with kits so we'll start with those labs where there's really clear protocol and we know we can get all the materials and we'll say to the students let's look at a few of these kits you know is there anything here that would interest you and then we change something about it so we'll say we don't want to just do the same old thing so we're going to take this good it's like a jump start for you but let's make it a little bit different, make it your own. And then they still feel they have the ownership of it, but it wasn't such a huge hurdle for them to get past that first step of picking a topic and starting to plan it. And then as a teacher, there's a little bit of a safety net going, well, I think something's gonna work out here. This shouldn't tank completely if we're, you know, we're buying it from Ecotech or Carolina, right? <laughs> so, um, so it's not, I, you know, not ideal, but for those students where it really is a challenge for them to just think of something to do on their own, at least you're kind of giving them a little bit of a step up. It does require a lot of bandwidth. And so I will say that it is, it is the most exciting time. I love it, but I also, at the, at the end of the day, I leave school thinking about different projects. I, every year, dream about different projects and <laughs> what's happening and think I oh no I haven't ordered the you know something yet and did this come in and who's taking care of the cockroaches and you know so it does take up a lot of space in your brain and there are weeks where there's not a lot of them but there are weeks where that's the only thing we do is science fair working through the different pieces of science fair so you do have to kind of move your curriculum around a little bit so that you can still fit in your frameworks for the year but then also have them have enough time to, to do this typically it's those it's the presentation week so there's usually a week when they're collecting data and that may last them two weeks, but there's usually one week where all we're doing in the lab is collecting data. Some students may have moved on. And then that presentation week is another kind of big push as well. So we are, we're very fortunate we can allow students $50 a project and we sell them and you can go over that if you want to. However, we're at a vocational school. There's a lot that we have here at our resources. We have culinary is usually willing to to donate if we want to look at the amount of vitamin C and different colored peppers. We've gone to culinary and said, could we please have like a green, a yellow, and a red pepper? And they've they've given it to us. Um, like I was saying about carpentry and HVAC and plumbing, there's a lot of materials that are scrap materials to them, but they're very helpful to us and they're helpful. Or even just equipment. So voltage meters, if you don't have one in your shop, if you're biotech and you don't have one, well, guess what? Electrical wiring, they definitely have one. And so rather than buying one, you can go borrow theirs. We've had students look at um, blood pressure and taking blood oxygen and pulse ox meters. We borrowed them from Health Tech. We didn't have to buy them. So there's a lot of ways that you can save on cost just simply because of the type of school that we're in. It can be big to have a school fair. That could be a big event. But as we were saying before, it's not necessary to have a school fair. So you don't have to have 
people come to your school and be judges. You can have the kids do projects, present them in whatever way makes sense in your shop or in your school. And then, and you have resources and help for figuring out who's gonna go on to the next step. So it's not a necessary thing to have. And then also reaching out, there are some smaller, not regional fairs, but some schools have them. Like I was saying before with Asabet, we invite people to come. You might find a school near you that is also looking to like, oh, we'd love to make our, our science fair a little bigger. Why don't you guys come here that traveling could also be a challenge too so i know with our vocational schools we have our little buses and we have them all the time that is an that's an advantage that we have so i don't have to get a big yellow bus or ask parents if i'm traveling to the regional or the state fair hopefully uh, if your school has that that will make it a little easier if it's not that could be a challenge for you too is trying to figure out how to how to get kids from from one place to another um, and then everything that goes along with having a field trip like that yeah. I think that's great. I think, you know, yeah. the, the reality is too of, of, you know, we've have had to do virtual fairs before and while that's not, that's not the ideal, it is an option if they're, if you want to have some sort of preliminary feedback session or things like that for kids to engage. So, um, thank you very much, Maria. I, I learned things, um, <laughs> in watching this slide. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm excited to work with more schools and, and, um, get some programs on board and, and look at where the possibilities are. So I, I, as you know, I am extremely enthusiastic about yeah. science fair and what it can do. I would say to anyone who is watching this video too, just as an ending note, that if you are having, if you're not sure how to figure something out or you're unsure, reach, reach out. The resources at MSCF have a wonderful, Rebecca is wonderful. And there's a list. If you kind of go on, there's, there's ways to click around and see what question you have. I'm a high school and I have a question about this and there's going to be a resource there. And at the, if you can't find exactly what you're looking for, you definitely will find a name of somebody you can click on and yep. shoot them an email because I email people all the time and say, I'm having this issue and I get responses back and it's wonderful. And so they, there is support for you. There is definitely support for teachers out there. I feel very supported. And I think that's one of the reasons that I can do this too, is because I know if I had a question, I can say, like, well, could you help me? Could you, do you know anybody who knows how to do this? Do you know of any other teachers doing this? And then at least there's somebody there in the other end to help me. And that means a lot. Yeah, and I think that's one of my big takeaways is that it's, it's a science fair, but it's so much more collaborative than competitive. So Definitely. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, and I will put some links in the um, box below the video when I post it. So thank you.